Let's just talk about some good old fashioned writing tips, which I just, you know, I love to love to talk about because I think it's useful. So yeah, what would be, uh, you know, your three or four uh, writing tips that you want to share this time around with uh, our audience? Well, I think um, the most, my most popular piece of advice, the thing that seems to resonate with everyone wherever I share it is to cut, 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 cut. You are almost always saying more than you need to about any given topic. So I've written about this in the, in the Substack a in a couple of different ways. There's, there are these words that we all use that people will almost always say we should not use uh, words like actually, basically, kind of, particularly, essentially, these words that we put in that feel a little bit like a hedge or a watering down of something. I talk to people when I'm working with writers, uh, especially writers who are trying to get something published, this is a very quick way to uh, both reduce your word count, which often matters if you're trying to get something published, but also to sharpen what you're trying to say. You need to notice if you're hedging like that, if you're saying, well, I basically think you're right. Why are you not just saying, I think you're right? You may have a reason for that. People often talk in person uh, that way because they're trying to soften the blow of something they're saying. So they may want to water it down, but I think, it's, it's helpful to think about your intentions with words like that. So that's, that's one way that I think is an easy way to cut. The other way that seems to resonate with people that I recommend to cut is to look for repetition. So it's very easy to look for repetition at the word level. Um, if I'm saying the same thing, I, I might say, uh, I, I want a friend who's loyal and true, right? You can just say, could I say loyal or could I say true and cut one of the re repeated words. But I think the more, the more common way that we repeat ourselves is we keep trying to say something more clearly. So we just say the same idea in multiple sentences or even in multiple paragraphs. And if you look back at your writing, you can see that it almost looks like you're working it out on the page, right? So you might say, you could you could do this with, with the example that we're talking about now. I might say, I think that repetition really gets in the way of a sharp message. And then I might be worried that I haven't said that clearly enough. So I would say something like, in other words, when you repeat yourself, your message is not as clear as it should have been. Those are the same sentence in, in two slightly different ways. People do this all the time in their writing. So I think if you're looking for a, a quick and really high impact way to sharpen your prose and get to your point more quickly, looking for that repetition, going through and highlighting sentences that say the same thing or whole paragraphs that seem to be making the same point. That, so that, that cutting is kind of my big go-to piece of advice. I mean, I think something that goes along with that or sort of my my overarching piece of advice is that whatever you're doing with your writing, you should be doing for a reason. So I think this really applies when people have been asking me a lot lately, you know, what do you think of Grammarly? What do you think of chat GPT? What do you think of any other grammar checker that we could name? And, you know, those things that they, they flag things, they're not always uh, edits that I would make. Uh, sometimes some they, they they flag very quickly and chat GPT I think is similar right now they'll flag very quickly for concision without understanding actually what the sentence means right because they're a machine and so you need to be able to look at those pieces of advice that you're getting from the machine or from an instructor or a, a supervisor at work or just from your own intuition that maybe you need to be more concise and say all right why am I doing this this way so do I have a reason? Is this what, what someone might say is an extra word? Actually, in this context, something that I want to keep. And so being able to make your own decisions about your writing, I think is going to be even more important as, as technology enters the picture. It's not always correct, at least right now. And so using any kind of tool uh, actually demands that you be able to have a reaction to its suggestion. So I think with cutting words, that's something that you want to look for. You know, is, is the meaning being changed? 
by this concision recommendation. Sometimes it is with the machine oriented edits. Similarly, I think we talk a lot about active verbs. This is something, you know, oh, you can make your writing crisper, more concise, clearer if you have people doing things in your sentences. And this is, I think, great advice in maybe 80% of situations. But sometimes you're going to make a very informed decision that you don't want to have a person doing something in the sentence because you want to put emphasis on the action that was done and actually minimize the emphasis on who did it. So we can think about this from a the corporate point of view, right? Uh, jobs were cut might be something that you would say if you were responsible for firing a thousand people rather than we fired a thousand people. So you're going to make that decision to be very context specific. You can have a machine. Uh, here we are just back to machines again, but you can have, you know, Grammarly will tell you reconsider this passive voice, but you really need to understand why you put that passive voice in to begin with. And if for some reason it's actually serving your larger point. So that would be another sort of go to piece of advice is to pay attention to your active verbs and your passive verbs. So one one piece of advice I just happened to be noticing lately, and I tweeted about this morning because it was on my mind, are what I call fake transitions. So people often try to make it seem like their ideas are connected to each other by throwing in a lot of moreovers, therefores, um, in addition, uh, other, I'm sure you can think of other words like that, but therefore and moreover pop up a lot. Um, and it, Often there is no therefore there, and there is no real moreover there. What we're trying to do is connect ideas that right. don't seem connected. So you'll see this at the beginning of paragraphs, right? People say in addition, because they think that they're supposed to make a transition between the previous idea and this one. When it's not technically an in addition, it's a completely separate idea that is right. not related to the previous paragraph. And I think that can be a really good place, not just to get rid of something that doesn't make sense, but to stop and think, what is the connection that I'm trying to make between these ideas? And can I do it by actually making a connection rather than by putting on this kind of fake transition there? So if it's not an in addition, what is it? Is it another way of looking at the issue? Is it um, another example or is it I now want to switch gears to something completely different, and I need to find a way to make that not jarring for my reader, rather than just pasting on a fake transition. 